there are three row operations, and they're also known as, uh, this process is called Ga Gaussian elimination. Uh, we're going to start out with the easier operations first. We could swap two rows. So if I want to swap row one and row three, what does that look like? Well, first of all, I can write out swap row one and row three. The result would be row three would be first, and then copy and paste row two and row one is going to be in the third position now. What's a nice way to uh, communicate that I'm swapping row one and three? It takes a little too long to write this down. So the book has a slightly different way to denote these operations. The way I write it is a swap arrow right here. So I'm swapping row three with row one. So this is swapping two rows. There's not much more to say about how to do it or how to write it. It's pretty easy to do. A lot of people would write row one, swap row three, something like that. Uh, whatever works for you. You could use this, this, or the way that's in the book. Or if you really like to write everything out, you could do that as well. The second operation, multiply a row by a non-zero real number. Why is non-zero important? What would happen if I multiplied this row by zero? I would get everything times zero would be zero, 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 zero. What does a zero row tell us? It gives us no information. So if you multiply row by zero, it's the same as erasing it or throwing that equation away. So it's not okay to multiply by zero. So we multiply by not zero. So what can I multiply row one by? I don't like fractions. How do I get rid of halves and thirds? I'm gonna multiply row one by six. The way I like to write multiply by six is like this. Wrap this in parentheses and you're gonna multiply, you have to be fair, everything in row one by six. So there's four things to multiply. Six times a half, three, six times a third, two, six times zero is zero, six times two is 12. And you wanna be careful that your 12 does not look like a one with a space and two. So you wanna be sure that if you're going to I have a multi-digit number that your digits are closer together than your spacing right here. If your writing uh, happens to be a bit messier, uh, normally we just augment with a single vertical bar. If you do enough of these problems, you might get lazy and stop writing your vertical bar. That's okay too. If you have trouble keeping them straight, always do this. Uh, and if you need a straight edge, a note card is a good thing. If you don't have access to a note card, you can always fold a piece of paper in half a couple times and use the edge of the paper to draw straight lines. So there was a multiply row one by six, and there we go. Last operation. This is the one you're gonna do the most frequently. It's also uh, the most involved. You're gonna add a multiple of one row to another row. So I have a matrix here. Let's, thinking about elimination, let's eliminate the three right here. The way I'm gonna write it is negative three row one. So I'm going to add negative three row one. I'm gonna add that to row two and then I'm gonna store that where row two is. So I'm gonna take negative three row one, add it to row two and store it where row two is. That's a lot of writing. So I basically skip this row two, row two part and just write minus three row one and I write it next to row two. So what do I get? Copy row one over. Minus three times one is negative three plus three is zero. The whole entire reason I did it to eliminate that. Negative three times two is negative six plus one, negative five. Negative three times zero is zero, plus one is one. Negative three times one is negative three plus zero, negative three. So you should be wondering why are we doing these operations? Uh, all these operations we're doing preserve the solution that uh, this system represents. So this solution to this will be the same as solution to this. What we're gonna be doing is getting to a reduced form. That's very nice.